Hey guys, have video, uh, right there, say something. Hello? It's fixed? Yeah. <laughs> say yeah, something yeah, else. Like say something else. Okay, restart. <laughs> so, oh, what I said <laughs> before starting. So, uh, so, uh, so I explained about the DXL. And, uh, so DXL creates uh, the very compact R uh, data structure uh, to, uh, based on uh, the OS default radix tree. So they uh, reuse the data and they create a compact data and the data structures is to fit our into the CPU cache hierarchies. So it can accelerate the load lookup speed. And so, and this time our, I ported our DXR patch our is created for our uh, the free BSD8. It's, it's a little bit old. So I ported the, the original one to, the, to fit into the free BSD12. And uh, and the DXL fib uh, lookup function is called instead IP found root. And this is our experimental setup. Uh, there's the two machines. Are and the one machine is in installed uh, my modified kernel, and the OS uh, the base OS is FreeBSD 12, and the CPU and the network interface card is very common one, our in Intel CPU and Intel NIC. It's 10, it's 10 year NIC. So there's a two machine and connected to the back to back uh, with 10 year NIC. And uh, the other machines are generated the packets uh, using package gen. And measure the packet rates forwarded by the router. It's very, very simple. And uh, the measurement metric are is uh, the packet size is uh, 60 bytes as a short packet, exclude CRC. And tra traffic has the same destination, so it are become the maximum cache efficiency. And the routing size is minimized or to less than 10 entries. And this is uh, the result of the performance measurement. So when uh, we, uh, the default, uh, FreeBSD are uh, forwarding a packet 1.43 million packets per second. And when we replace the two parts, uh, this, it, this, this line, and switch with and DXR, uh, this performance accelerates to the 2.43 million packets per second. But the M switch uh, itself has a potential to uh, uh, has the potential to forwarding the packets are uh, <coughs> over 10 million packets per second uh, because it doesn't uh, go up the kernel. So we can see there, there's a huge gap, uh, still a huge gap between uh, our when we uh, forward the packet to the kernel or not. So, so to find uh, where is the our bottleneck, um, we measure uh, the, uh, the latency more detailed, okay? So this is uh, the other measurement uh, to know the bottleneck. And the measurement methodology is a little bit tricky uh, using uh, M-switch. And the M-switch is uh, the hard-coded to for the packet to an um, intended output. So it means that when the packet returns uh, to the M switch layer, uh, it is uh, anyway if the packet corrupt or not, or uh, it is anyway or uh, uh, sent to the other NIC. So, so the receive the packets uh, on the packet generator machine are uh, and uh, measure the, the uh, measure the packet uh, traffic rate. And then we can measure the time from the packet arrives uh, at the NIC and uh, the returning point. So the table uh, summarizes the results. 
And the point is, uh, even if, uh, so here's the, the which function takes uh, the time, and uh, the first is our L2 input, and the second is L3 input, this, the third one is L3 output, and the last one is L2 output. So from these results, uh, the point is, uh, even if our root lookup our uh, cost is minimized, uh, L2 input and output uh, routine takes about over 200, 215 nanoseconds and make, make slow down the performance. Okay, so our measurement confirms uh, that the packet IO and the root lookup are not expensive uh, anymore. And uh, anymore, okay. So the point is the uh, input and uh, L2 input and output part. Okay, so from this are uh, the first design and the measurement. Uh, we can say the three things, and uh, the packet IO and the root is, is not is not a bottleneck anymore, and uh, L2 input and output part are expensive. So for faster speeding up, are uh, we have to bypass uh, the expensive this part. Okay. So from this takeaway, uh, we found uh, the replace the packet IO root up uh, not enough to speed up, so then we renew the design. So uh, this is the, uh, the addition of the, uh, this is a renewed design and implementation. So the basic idea, idea is our coalitionary bypass the expensive code uh, and at the both input and output pass. Okay, so this time we focus on IPv4 forwarding and the propose a new method to bypass the, 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 part, the other features. So for avoiding our input part of the Ethernet processing, uh, we implement a filtering feature uh, to allow the packet uh, which uh, matches the rule uh, this time I did before and can shortcut the Ethernet input uh, and directly goes to the L3 input routine. So this red arrow indicates the fast pass and the black one is the default pass. So this is the input, in, input bypass part. So the other is output bypass part. So to improve the performance of our Ethernet output routine, uh, reduce uh, so reducing the frequency to our access the MAC address table is important. So L2 cap uh, has uh, already optimized uh, by Q or internal caching mechanisms, but our target speed is uh, requires nanoseconds a level saving, and the uh, cost of L2 cap uh, is is not trivial uh, according to our measurement. So. So we, we extended the DXR's FIB to cast the Ethernet header information and to uh, Ethernet in information uh, for the next hop. Okay. And uh, so and the, the first packets are need to have to uh, go to the slope, black black low slow pass, but if the second the subsequent packet are uh, has uh, the same destination. Uh, it can use the cache data uh, in the DXR feed. So, the, if the packet has the same destination, they it can bypass the IF output routine and directly back to the M switch layer. And this cache information are uh, is varied within the batch M switch process. So this is the, the new design implementation, and so next is the evaluation. Uh, the machines, the experiment is set up as almost same as uh, the previous measurement, and but this time the packet size is uh, varies from uh, the short packet to the large packet, 
and the other is the uncertainty. So this is the, the results of various packet size. So the graph uh, describes the throughput of um, IP forwarding of uh, different modules uh, uh, with a six variety of packet size. So we compare previously the default forwarding plan to our implementation. So X axis are the, is the packet size and and to uh, and the two node uh, to know the which improvement affects uh, the performance, we create, create and run the full version of our implementation. So the all our implementation are equipped the uh, M-switch and DXR, and uh, the difference is between uh, these uh, four modules is the level of the bypass, okay? So no, no bypass, the blue, the no bypass are uh, indicates uh, this, 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 this implementation has a uh, MSH and DXL, but no input or uh, output bypass. And the green one has a uh, input bypass and output, output bypass means it has only the output bypass. And uh, the pink one are, is fully bypassing the uh, input and the output part. So, So the native free VSD and uh, and the uh, most uh, most right part gray bar uh, means the line rate uh, with the, the packet size. Okay. So the native free VSD and the no bypass uh, records line rate uh, at the large packet size or uh, one K or something. But our implementation reached the line rate with our uh, 252. And also uh, in a short packet, uh, our free uh, input plus output bypass can reach uh, over five million packet per second. It is, uh, which is a factor of 3.8 uh, improvement of forwarding, the uh, forwarding speed. So the other graph reports are the relation uh, between the throughput and the batch size in M-switch. The batch size varies from one to one, 1,024 with two different packet size. And so we investigate the batch size effect on throughput uh, because M-switch paper shows our the throughput of MCH affected by the batch size, and, and so we expected that our implementation is also affected by the batch size, okay? Because uh, not only the MCH itself can be affected by the batch size, but we are setting the cache arriving time uh, with, with the batch size, okay? So the the throughput increases uh, with growing the batch size, and it are uh, reach its peak uh, 256 or 512, okay. and and not our uh, change after that. Okay. So this shape is almost the same are uh, in uh, showed in the MC paper. So. Uh, MCT paper. So we need more uh, investigation and um, analyze and investi investigation, but the cost of our cash are, could be, it's, it's not a high impact to the performance. Okay. Okay. So from these results, uh, we, can see the, uh, we can say that our, our new implementation uh, reduced uh, over the 80% of uh, L2 input and uh, also L2 output routine. Okay. And our implementation accelerated default free BSD IP forwarding rate by a factor of 3.8 and reached 
over 5 million packets per second with minimum size packet. A default is 1.4 DeFi. So the cache creation cost appears relatively cheap, but this part is uh, needed in um, the further analysis. Okay, in a future work, about future work. So um, this, this measurement is uh, basically on the, the single core uh, performance. So, so I need to do uh, more measurement uh, with multi-core scalability. And uh, also need to uh, the scalability to the routing table entry. And uh, also I want to do some contribution to the previous itself. Okay. So here's the conclusion. So my, my, uh, my research started to the problem that the user space networking has many, many problems in practice. So the, my approach is the fast kernel based packet forwarding. And in this approach, uh, we take the three measure our design and uh, the the replace the packet IO and the root lookup part. And then on the bypass expensive routine at the both input and the output part. So this uh, approach uh, has reaches uh, uh, 3.8 times speed up to the default 3BSD. And they increase the, pack increase the packet forwarding rate to the five, five million packets per second. So this result demonstrated the possibility of kernel-based packet forwarding. Okay, so I will show the demo. Okay. So the first demo is very simple performance test uh, of my router. And the second one is to show the, uh, the compatibility to our normal routing sockets. So in the router, our, my implement, my, uh, modified the kernel, uh, so running in the application uh, the BGP daemon, top of my uh, router. And the shoulder, this BGP daemon are works, uh, works. Okay. So. Okay, so. The first demo, this is the packet generator. Can you see that? Yeah, I can make the text look like Okay. So. This machine is a packet generator machine, and uh, with uh, using with a packet gen, uh, this this is the process of sending the packets. So this process uh, create uh, the packet are uh, in four, fourteen eighty eight million packet per second. So sending a packet to the loading machine right now, and the other. So in the diatonic, uh, the, here's the receive, uh, receiving uh, process, and they receive the packet uh, with 1.6 million packets per second. Uh, and uh, so, so we attach the router machine. Uh, in the router machine, we attach the the NICs to the the M switch, and then <coughs> the sending machine or also creates the the ten gig line late traffic, and this time uh, we attach. The, the NIC to NIC to the M switch, so uh, the Lutron machine can forward the over five million packets per second this time. Okay. okay. 
And the other demo is our, uh, our to using the BZP demo are in top of this router. So, so in in the router machine, uh, the BZP demo is running, and uh, the other side of machine. Uh, Here's uh, the emulator to are uh, creating the BZP daemon uh, as a neighbor. So, so this emulator uh, create the BZP daemon and uh, sending a lot of information to the to my router. So. So in this, uh, our machine uh, can uh, receive the BZP uh, information. Okay, like this. Okay. Okay, okay that's it. Any, any. Okay, thanks for listening. Any questions or any comments? I wonder if you did a better job than you think you did. Um, so, have you met, you met, you keep mentioning um, you know, actual 10 gig line rate. Mm -hmm. but what's the, have, did you measure our FreeBSD IX driver and how fast a single queue can receive and receive up to you know, the point at which your switch runs? And just drop it as it enters the switch. Oh, excuse me. Can, can so, I? <laughs> so you're measuring everything, you know, from the above the driver. But have you measured how long it takes the driver to allocate an unbuff and to receive the to receive the packet and to and to, to dispatch the packet up? So, for example, have you measured your input traffic coming in and then you just freeing the packet at the very beginning of your path? Um, actually, uh, in my implementation. Uh, I don't use uh, our user device driver because it's replaced by, by netmap. Oh, so you're using netmap? Yes, right? yes, okay, yes, I, yes. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other question? Is there any sort of some um, official certified IPv6 um, about IPv6? Yeah. Um, and this implementation, our uh, user uh, DXR, so DXR is only for the IPv4. So, so packet IO part can uh, accelerate the rate, uh, even if the IPv6. <coughs> but the logging uh, lookup part is not efficient to the IPv6. Uh, yeah. How many routes did you have in your routing table for the test? Uh, the, this this measurement are less than ten, so it's it's the the loading table size is minimized, less than ten. Okay. So so that's why I need to or in the future work need to uh, the loading table scalability and the the relation to the performance. Any other questions? Thank you. No? Okay. Thank you.